Hey everyone, and welcome. So, you know when you see a headline, something like, New Miracle Drug Discovered, and you kind of have to wonder, yeah, but how do they really know it works, right? Is it actually doing something, or is it just wishful thinking, or maybe even pure luck? Well, today, we're going to pull back the curtain on one of the key tools that scientists use to find out for sure. So, let's stick with that miracle drug idea. Imagine a new pill comes out that's supposed to boost your memory. Some people take it, and they're like, wow, I feel so much sharper. But then other people are like, eh, I don't feel any different. So what's going on here? Is the pill creating a real measurable effect, what scientists call a signal? Or are the results just random variations, what they call noise? And that right there, that's the million-dollar question in pretty much all of medical research. Without a reliable way to answer it, we're all just guessing. Every new treatment, every public health guideline, it all faces this exact same fundamental challenge, separating a real impact from all that statistical static. To tackle this, scientists have a system. They don't just cross their fingers and hope for the best. They start with a formal idea called a research hypothesis. Really, it's just their educated guess, but it's put into a very clear, testable statement. So for our memory pill, it might be something like, this drug improves memory scores more than a placebo. Simple. Testable. But a hypothesis is just the start. You still need the right tool to actually test it. So how do you test a hypothesis like that? Well, you need the right tool for the job. And in statistics, one of the most powerful and trusted tools is something called the student's t-test. It's a foundational method used all over health sciences to compare the averages of different groups. The t-test gets its power from a statistical concept called the t-distribution. You can think of it like a special map for data that's designed for the real world. Because, let's be honest, researchers can't test every single person on the planet. They have to rely on smaller, more realistic groups of people to draw conclusions. And the t-distribution is built for exactly that. Now, you've probably heard of the normal distribution. That's the classic bell curve. Well, the t-distribution is kind of like its more cautious cousin. It has what are called thicker tails, which is just a nerdy way of saying it's more skeptical. It accounts for the extra uncertainty that you get when you work with smaller samples, so it demands stronger evidence before it's going to confirm that an effect is real. Now, the t-test isn't just a single one-size-fits-all tool. It's more like a Swiss Army knife. It's got different attachments for different questions. Let's start with the first and most straightforward version, the one-sample t-test. This test is all about answering one very specific question. Is the average of the group I just measured significantly different from some established standard or a known number? Here's a perfect example to make it real. Let's say health officials know that a standard systolic blood pressure is about 140. Then, researchers go and test a sample of 157 men in a specific town, and they find their average is 146. Okay, it's higher, but is that six-point difference actually meaningful, or is it just a random blip? The one-sample t-test is exactly what researchers would use to answer this. It crunches the numbers and calculates the probability that a difference that big could have happened by random chance alone. This helps them decide if that community truly has higher than average blood pressure. Okay, that's great if you have a known standard to compare against. But what if you don't? What if you want to compare two totally different groups to each other? For that, we turn to the next tool in our kit, the unpaired t-test. This is the classic setup you see in so many clinical trials. You might have a group that gets a new drug and a control group that gets a placebo. Or like in this next real world example, you could compare a group of smokers to a group of non-smokers. Check this out. In a pretty fascinating study, researchers measured cadmium levels in the placentas of new mothers. They found the average level in the group of 14 smokers was 20.6. But for the 18 non-smokers, the average was way lower, at 14.9. I mean, visually, the difference is just crystal clear. It absolutely looks like smokers have higher levels. But, and this is a huge but in statistics, looks can be deceiving. We need to know if this difference is statistically significant or if it's something that just could have happened by chance. The unpaired t-test is the tool that gives them the answer. By running the numbers, scientists can move from just an observation to a confident, evidence-backed conclusion about the link between smoking during pregnancy and those cadmium levels. Okay, so we've compared one group to a standard and two different groups to each other. But what about when you're measuring the same group of people twice? You know, like a before and after scenario. For that, we need our third and final tool, the paired t-test. This one is incredibly powerful. 
Why? Because it controls for all the natural variations between people. You're not comparing me to you. You're comparing me before the treatment to me after the treatment. The whole goal is to see if the intervention caused a meaningful change in each specific person. So in this study, surgeons wanted to know if a particular procedure was effective. They measured something called the GBEF percentage. It's basically a measure of how well the gallbladder is working. They took measurements before the surgery and then again after. And look at that. On average, the GBEF percentage jumped from 35.5% all the way up to 52.3%. That's a huge increase. The paired T-test answers this exact question by looking at the change within each individual patient. By analyzing these paired differences, it provides really strong evidence about whether the surgery itself was the cause of this dramatic improvement. So we've covered the one sample, unpaired, and paired t-tests. They're all neat statistical tools for sure. But let's zoom out. Why is this so important for our health and for the medicine that we rely on every day? Well, this four-step process is the absolute foundation of what we call evidence-based medicine. It's the structured path that takes us from a scientist saying, hmm, I think this might work, to a doctor saying, we have solid evidence that this works. It's how we turn curiosity into clinical confidence. I mean, think about it. Every effective drug, every successful surgery, every single public health guideline you follow, at some point in its development, a statistical test like the T-test was used to prove its worth. They act as these scientific gatekeepers, filtering out all the noise and only letting the true signals get through. The T-test is this powerful reminder that with the right methods, we can find truth and clarity in a really complex world. It helps us move beyond anecdotes and make decisions that literally save lives. So while data gives us powerful answers, the real question is always, what shall we be asking next? Thanks for watching.